I'm with uh, Victor Kalasha from the Bible Society in Israel. Now, Victor, what is the Bible Society in Israel? The Bible Society in Israel is about bringing the Word of God to our society. We want to bring the fullness of the message of the Word of God to our society. Um, we are not just about producing more Bibles for someone's library or to put on a shelf, but we want to open the message of the Bible. We want to advocate for the message of the Bible. We want to promote and enable people to engage with the Word of God. And uh, when were you founded here in Israel? So this goes uh, a long way back. Um, actually, the work in Israel started already in the beginning of the 19th century with people coming even on the back of donkeys and um, uh, bringing Bibles and giving Bible in exchange of eggs and uh, all these kind of ways going from door to door in the uh, uh, Jewish, uh, uh, amongst Jews and Arabs. Um, but uh, after the establishment of the State of Israel, actually in 1949, we were established officially. So um, if you want an official date, it's 1949. If you want to know when this work started, then the Word of God came to Israel uh, almost 200 years ago in Hebrew and Arabic and other languages. And what's your mission here in the land? Um, well, our mission is to uh, open up the, uh, the message of the Bible to the uh, Israeli society. As you know, the Jews, of course, they uh, accept the Old Testament. They, uh, uh, it's not just that they accept it. They see in it like their greatest uh, heritage. But it is also true to say that in large, we are a uh, secular society. And the religious Jews whom you would expect to know the Bible and understand it. Um, they have uh, the rabbinical commentaries, the Jewish traditions, and so on, through which they look upon the text. And when it comes to, uh, uh, to all the uh, Christian understanding of the text and the messianic understanding of the text, which we know that even Christ says on the road to Emmaus that everything in the Old Testament speaks about him from Moses and Psalms and the writings, then they do not really understand it in the same way. Yeah. So uh, one challenge for us is really to open up the message of the Bible. And uh, we do that in various ways. For example, one way uh, that uh, one of the big projects uh, recently was the first ever Hebrew cross-reference Bible. In English, you have uh, like maybe two, more than 200 different study and cross-reference Bibles. In Hebrew, we had none. And the reason is that Jews traditionally study the Bible through rabbinical commentaries. So their understanding of the Bible is, uh, is different in, in many ways. Sometimes it's beautiful, but sometimes it's also missing the point, as I may say. And this is like finding the true Messiah and the revelation of God's grace through the Messiah and his love for them. And I would even say, as the Bible Society in Israel, first for them, because even Christ himself says, I didn't come but to the lost sheep of Israel, and so on. So we really want to reveal God's heart for them by opening the word of God for them so that they can really know him personally. Now, do Orthodox Jews, do they actually read the Bible or do they just read commentaries about the Bible more? Well, they, uh, they read definitely a lot of commentaries, but it would not be right to say that they don't read the Bible at all. Mm. Um, they do believe that the uh, commentaries is like the living Torah. It's the living Word of God, because they claim that the Word of God is you know, direct Word of God. We as people cannot really understand it, and therefore we need the rabbinical commentaries to tell us how to live the word of God because they say well that's the word of God but how do you live it and they say for example okay it says keep the Shabbat how do you keep the Shabbat you don't know it just says keep the Sabbath and so on and there are many many more examples don't eat uh, uh, you know uh, uh, what's the word in English the uh, the calf with its mother's milk yep. I hope I quote it correct in English so they say okay what what how exactly do you fulfill that today you need the rabbinical writings to give you this understanding. So actually, in their eyes, the rabbinical commentaries is the living Torah. Mm. 
Now, of course, because of the uh, history between Jews and Christianity, they do not accept, and, and because of not accepting Christ as the Messiah that the scriptures speak about, mm. they find other ways to understand the uh, messianic uh, scriptures. Now, we all know that much of the scriptures are messianic, mm. and uh, much of them have prophetic meaning mm. about the Messiah. So, with this regard, of course, if you don't see that, in my understanding, you miss a lot, if not the main message of the scriptures. Now, this is not even mentioning the New Covenant, the New Testament, that they do not see as the Word of God. Mm. So, we try to, uh, to show them how the New Covenant is the fulfillment of the Old Covenant, and that actually in the Old Covenant it points to the New Covenant and prophesied. Uh, uh, about the new covenant Jeremiah 31 31 for example mm. well, now you have uh, a bookshop right here in Jerusalem on Jaffa Street what can people see when they come here well first of all they can see that uh, we are excited to uh, to see them mm. and that we are happy when they come and we are happy to share with them uh, not only the books that we have on the shelves and the resources but also to explain uh, what we believe in um, and, uh, and maybe even guide them through various of resources that we have. Um, and uh, why do I say that? Because the bookstore is just one of our projects, if you like. And this is something that you see from the street. Mm. So it is kind of uh, easy to say, well, the Bible Society, it's a bookstore. But we are much more than that. Even in terms of just technical scope of our work, um, we do a lot of other projects um, and, uh, and of course, yes, this is very important because it's graphic location and people can find you and they can come when they have questions and so on. So it is very important. It's strategic and you are here so you know how central mm -hmm. our location. And we have people from all walks of life who come here. It's very close to the old city. So we have a lot of Arab speaking that comes here. It's very close to the Orthodox part of Jerusalem, and it's very close to the new city. So it is actually in this triangle, mm. you, if you like, that many people from all walks of life visit us, and it gives us an opportunity to share and to answer to many people and different people about our faith. Now, you also have an exhibition in the bookshop as well. What's that about? Yes, we have a beautiful exhibition that actually tells the story of how we got the Word of God. And actually, it is there to educate on the reliability of the Scriptures. You know, many people, they see the Bible, but they don't really know how did we get the Bible. How was it kept and transmitted through centuries, through thousands of years? Where did it all start? What are the original uh, uh, manuscripts? Do we have them at all? Mm -hmm. And so on. So in this little exhibition, we uh, have some, some of the uh, uh, first manuscripts. Not always we have uh, originals, of course, but we have uh, copies of them. And we have uh, uh, some of the main texts of the Bible, the Old Testament, for example. We have a copy of the Qumran scroll of Isaiah, for example. And uh, uh, so we know that the, the same text that was found in Qumran from 100 years before Christ and the text of the Masoretic text that we use today, which is from uh, the 10th century, is actually the same, mm. for example. So the Bible that, you know, the Old Testament, I call it sometimes the Jesus Bible. Mm. That's the Bible that Jesus had. Yeah. So his Bible is the same that we have today. And this is known, this is because we have the, the, the findings from Qumran, for example. Yeah. Okay? Now we also have copies of New Testament evidences. And by the way, the New Testament is the most proven text of its time. Mm -hmm. There isn't any other uh, book uh, from that time with so many evidences, more than 5,000, for example. Mm -hmm. So we actually show the people that the Bible that we have today is authentic, it's the same one, it's the original one that was more than 2,000 uh, years ago. And we also try through the other things that we have in Jerusalem, 
uh, to show that uh, it is reliable. Mm -hmm. We have uh, through archaeology, the Ezekiel tunnel, Ezekiel tunnel, for example, people walk there, yeah. okay, and they find the text about it also in the Bible. So mm -hmm. this place is full with evidences of the truth of the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And what other projects do you run here from the, the Bible Society in Israel? Um, many projects, and we always challenge ourselves uh, in how can we think ahead of time what is needed and what will be needed in the future, and how can we work now for the things that will be needed in the future. Mm. So, for example, I mean, uh, we already for some years we are working on digital resources, and um, we produced a beautiful recording of the Bible in Hebrew. Mm. Uh, today, many uh, Israelis... Uh, don't know the text of the Bible. The Biblical Hebrew is difficult. They don't really know how to read it. So by having this audio, which is beautiful, they can listen to that and they can better understand it. Mm -hmm. That's one way. And we are building an application. We have applications of the Bible, of the scriptures. The, the local body of uh, Hebrew-speaking uh, believers is growing in Israel. Uh, is growing uh, uh, in a very encouraging way. There are much more young people, young families, children. So we produced materials for children, whether it is in audio, with music, CDs, or uh, just beautiful books for children. Uh, we just uh, launched a Hebrew website for the study of scriptures with user interface in Hebrew, Russian, and Arabic, mm -hmm. because these are the majority of the languages of the people here in Israel. Um, and it has all kinds of uh, um, capabilities. We are working on an annotated Bible for the Hebrew uh, readers. Uh, we are working for on more um, um, uh, children's materials. We are building here inside our premises a dialogue center because we see many more people, mm. actually even Orthodox Jews, that come inside and that they are asking questions about our faith. Mm. We see a bigger... Uh, openness and seeking and openness to read the New Testament amongst Jews and amongst even religious people. And when they come, sometimes um, they are a bit afraid not to be seen through the window that we have uh, to the street or if, someone, if, or if another Orthodox will come and see them. So we have another room here to enable them like a discreet conversation in a very nice and welcoming atmosphere. So this is something that we're just building now inside our premises more projects we are doing uh, a book for youth because one of the challenges for youth even believing ones is to really understand the word of god you know my daughter sometimes she's uh, now 16 but uh, two or three years ago she would come to me and complain daddy <laughs> uh, it's hard for me to read i i i cannot really keep reading every day i, I it's it's not interesting all the time or not all the time it's interesting, especially when you read like uh, Deuteronomy and Leviticus, some of these books that has a lot of commands and so on. So this book that we produce now actually explains to youth the, to, uh, to, to understand the Bible as a whole. So that when they read a, a chapter here or a book here, they know to connect it with the overall message of the Bible. So that's a, a beautiful book for you to understand, you know, the terminology of the Bible, the concepts that are, on the, uh, that are in the Bible. What is the main story of the Bible? So that's, uh, for example, something we work on. And we see that as, you know, this is strategic because once you have something like that, then it can, uh, um, um, you know, it's for the next generations. Mm. It's not something that in two years it's, uh, uh, you know, it's obsolete. This is something that we are working on now, and it will last uh, much beyond us and after us. Uh, and this is really encouraging and gives us a lot of uh, motivation and joy in our work. Mm. Yeah. Uh, now, do you have a good relationship with the Palestinian Bible Society here in the land as well? Of course. Um, they are uh, brothers in the Lord, mm. and that's how we see it. And of course, we have challenges. Um, uh, in the situation that we live, we live in the midst of a conflict and just now we are a few weeks after another, uh, actually war, rockets flying uh, from Gaza to Israel, uh, Israel retaliating, uh, a war with lots of casualties. Mm. So, uh, but we do know that even though our peoples see themselves as enemies, we are not enemies. We are uh, brothers in the Lord. This is how God 
looks at us. And it is important that we don't lose the sight that God has, uh, uh, you know, the way that he is looking at us. And uh, we're trying in situations like that, also on a regular basis, but also specifically in situations like that, to find ways in which we can bring a message of peace uh, to our peoples. How can we encourage them and give a testimony that things can be different? Um, we, uh, we decide not to be enemies. Mm -hmm. And we know that uh, it is really, uh, it is from the enemy to, uh, to, to put a separation. So uh, definitely we try to cooperate and we do partner in, in many ways. Is it easy working in Israel? Um, you know, those that work hard, it's uh, hard for them to, to work any place. <laughs> and we are working hard, so it's not easy because we are working hard. But um, some of the things are more challenging. I must say that, uh, as you know, Israel is uh, an open democratic society. Yes, we have some difficulties uh, because of the type of the work that we do and because of, you know, uh, I cannot say that uh, all parts of the population and groups in Israel, they accept and, and like what we do. Uh, that is not the true. But it is a place which is dem uh, democratic and, uh, you know, we don't work against the law. Mm. Um, and we want to serve our society. So uh, we do a lot of things in which we find, or we try to find commonalities even uh, uh, with authorities and with the uh, society. And just to give you one example, we just did a project called Colors of the Bible mm -hmm. in cooperation with the Israel Embassy in another country mm -hmm. and uh, in which uh, children in Israel, from schools in Israel, and children in another country did um, uh, drawings and artwork on the theme of the Feast of Israel. Mm. So this was a way actually to connect children with the Bible through a beautiful competition, uh, arts competition, but also to connect people, uh, Christians, uh, to, the, to Israel, mm. to the roots of their faith and to the Jewish people. So this is something that, of course, serves us to connect people and children with the Bible, but I think it also serves uh, our, uh, our country. Mm. Mm. How well is the New Testament received here in the Holy Land? Uh, much better than before, I must say. Um, just to give you an example, imagine that, after the fo that following the Holocaust, mm. I would come as a Jew to a Jew person in Israel and tell him, well, you know, the New Testament or the Christian faith is the faith which is the true faith for us as Jews. This would be uh, uh, considered for them very rude. Mm. What do you mean? I mean, the Holocaust happened in a Christian country. It happened in Europe. Mm. Uh, it was done by Christians in their eyes, mm. okay? Uh, on the uniform of the German SS soldiers on the belt, it said, God mit uns, God with us. Mm and so on and so on. So you see, what I'm trying to say is that the background and even recent history, I mean, in terms of history, 60, 70 years is really not much. Mm. These people are still alive. My yeah. father is a Holocaust survivor. Mm. So uh, I myself experienced these things firsthand. It's not something that disappears, you know, after some years and that you can say to these people, well, you know, so-and-so years passed away. What do you mean? I lost my parents. You don't lose it away. You know, I'm, I myself, just to give you an example. Growing up, I didn't have, uh, I mean, my parents, but no other family. Yeah. And you, sometimes I would see other kids coming to school with their grandparents or walking hand in hand in grandparents. And all the time, it kind of was very strange for me. It stood out because I didn't have this experience. I felt like... How, what does a kid do with an elderly person, with an old man or old woman? It looks strange for me mm. because I never had it. Yeah. But then when I had only when I had my own children and I saw how much love they received from their grandparents mm. and how beautiful uh, and, and um, adding and giving is this relationship of my two-year-old with her grandparents sitting on their lap holding hands, I realized what I didn't have. Mm. You see? So, I mean, when you don't know or experience something, you can look at it only from one angle and say, why this or why that? Uh, anyways, 
Um, today, there is a much greater openness. I can tell you that last year, I participated a panel that was done by uh, a, an Orthodox uh, Institute, a Reformed Orthodox Jewish Orthodox Institute, a Jewish, Jewish Rabbinical Institute, in which the title was, Why Should Every Jew Read the New Testament? Okay, and, and it was, uh, the, the hall was packed, and it was a panel by five uh, uh, rabbinical uh, professors and so on, and they gave just a lot of good reasons. One that they mentioned, for example, they said, well, through the Old Testament, we can learn about Judaism in the time of Christ, in that time, that we don't have much resources for that. And they gave the example of Jesus in the synagogue and how he read from the prophets. So they say, well, we know that at the Sabbath in the synagogue, they would read also from the prophets, not only from the Torah. Yeah. And he stood and, uh, and gave back the, the, the scroll and so on. So we have some knowledge of uh, Jewish culture uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. Another reason that they mentioned is that we live today in a society, the Western society, many of the Jews learn, uh, live in Western societies. You have more than six million Jews in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And the Western society, its culture is uh, from the New Testament, right? I mean, basically it's Jewish, yeah. but <laughs> it's the New Testament. So you need to know it to understand their culture mm -hmm. and to, to assimilate better in the society that we live in, to communicate better and so on. In any ways, this is just one example, but we see it on a daily basis. I can tell you that more religious people come even uh, here mm -hmm. uh, and ask questions, are open to dialogue, and many times I ask them, so did you read the New Testament? And they say, well, yes. Mm -hmm. Just recently, uh, a friend of mine visited and he told me, you know, Victor, I just was, I visited uh, uh, some religious friends uh, in a synagogue, actually, and uh, um, and they had they gave someone there, one of the guys, to give a, a, a lecture, mm. and the lecture that he gave was comparing the uh, the teachings of Jesus with the teaching of Rabbi Akiva, mm. which is a very well known uh, rabbi in in the uh, first second century and so on. And he said, actually, that the teaching of Rabbi Akiva was superior to the teaching of Jesus. And he gave the example of Jesus saying, if someone slaps you on, the, uh, on your cheek, give the other cheek. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is not something that we really uh, consider to be a high or a highly estimated teaching because, you know, that's not the way you should behave. You should not necessarily be, uh, you know, slap the other one, but that's not the way that society today behave, and it shows that it was not really accepted, and so on and so on. Mm. As he finished that, five guys came back to him and told him, you know, you got it wrong. And these are, you know, Orthodox Jews. He said, you got it wrong. Jesus' uh, uh, teaching was superior, and Rabbi Akiva's was not superior, <laughs> because it is known that his disciples of Rabbi Akiva, they're fighting all the time amongst themselves, and then that actually brought to, their, uh, to the fact that they uh, diminished mm. with the years, I think. They were even fighting each other at the end. So it is known that they were actually the opposite of Jesus' teaching, and because of that, they did not last. Mm. But what Jesus was teaching was not just to give your, uh, uh, your cheek so that people would slap it all the time, but he was giving an advice and teaching his disciples how to treat each other mm. and how to uh, relate to each other amongst them basically what's that's what they said so just to, st to tell you that even orthodox jews are looking into the teachings of the new testament not necessarily they do that because they want to believe in it but whatever reason they have i believe that the word of god has the power mm. to touch your heart and you know and the holy and god can use it to really uh, open your eyes through the holy spirit mm. so uh, so we see that the bottom line is that yes we do see a greater interest and lack much less fear amongst jews to read the new testament mm. are you based only here in jerusalem or in other parts of israel as well um we have another center in tel aviv mm. and uh, it's another bookstore and a center from where we operate so we have jerusalem and tel aviv um, but we also go from here many times to other places so although we don't have like a permanent location in other places we go there 
in different different occasions either it's book fairs or conferences or other partners that we work work with and through mm. and, and what's your prayer finally for the holy land wow it's a uh, it's a challenge because uh, there are so many things that i want for the holy land um i want really that the lord will pour his spirit upon this land mm. so that many uh, that received his word will uh, come to faith that will really uh, understand the message of the bible and god's love for them so you know we give so much scriptures and we pray that the lord will pour his uh, spirit upon those that receive it uh, we pray for the peace of jerusalem because we know that the peace of jerusalem is a prayer prayer for the peace of jerusalem is a prayer for the establishing of god's kingdom mm. because the true peace will come with him mm. that we also know that so yes we uh, pray for peace um, but we also know that the true peace will come with the Messiah when he establishes kingdom. And until then, we pray also that he will grant us mercy and wisdom and, uh, yeah, and all that is needed really to serve him and to bring the word to as many people as we can. Uh, and uh, as I know that uh, this uh, uh, radio station is broadcasting mainly to young people, I would really encourage uh, young people who are listening now to, uh, to come and visit us uh, physically in Israel. If you love the Bible, so it's a place that you must see. And uh, come and visit the Bible Society. And if you cannot do it physically, you can in the meanwhile do it virtually. Mm. And uh, yes, I mentioned my prayer request, but I just want to, to say that uh, I would love you to join me in, in, these, uh, in these prayers. There is a lot of things that you may hear about Israel in the news, but uh, remember that uh, uh, the good news are the news that really matters. So uh, the Bible really encourages all of us to uh, have a heart for the people of Israel, for the land of Israel, and for the salvation of Israel. So I would like to challenge you with that and, uh, and really also pray that God will bless you. You have a website for people who'd like to know more. What's your website address? Yes, it's easy. It's www.biblesocietyinisrael.com. Well, Victor, thank you very much. Thank you very much.